carefully we watch everything till everything goes on completely. You can look around. I just want to show you the entire church and um, every AC, every seat, every equipment, everything in the church. Wednesday morning or it's afternoon or evening, I see that seven days after I said that thing, a church burned down in Lagos will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble and the Temple Mount a wooded ridge. In other words, utter and total disaster. When a city becomes like a field that was plowed, that's not a good thing. I'd like us to take an offering. I've never done this before. To send to that church group. Now, I don't know anything about them. But I do know that we need to rebuild the house of David. Praise God. Blessings of grace and we thank God for everything. Well, thanks a lot to Matthew. And as you know, mercy doesn't start today. But something happened and I just want to put a message out there to people. I came here this morning, everybody set you up, everything was going fine. All of a sudden, we started hearing that there was fire, something up there on the roof of the church, and then uh, it became bigger. From the beginning, we actually called the fire services, who did not arrive until one hour after. Thankfully, we watched everything till everything got on completely. You can look around. I just want to show you the entire church. And then... Um, Every AC, every seat, every equipment, everything in the church. When nobody anticipated this, I know there will be reactions. I people will say that, but, the, but that's none of my concern now. But the most important thing is this. We thank God that no life was lost, and we thank God for everything. We are not to discouraged. We believe God that we will still go out with the conference. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I just want to say this to everybody out there. We are not sad. We are happy. The Bible says, uh, no, uh, no, not to God. No, let me ask you, I should use a better scripture. All things work together. The Bible didn't say all good things. All things, good, bad, and the ugly. It's a painful experience, no doubt. But in the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. In the interest, nobody even walked into the compound and it was actually mocking, saying that where was Jesus when this happened? We don't owe such people an answer. All we believe is that all things work together. If you're out there, we will still have the meeting within the premises this evening. By the grace of God, it's going to be a great time in the Holy Ghost. We will know what to do about rebuilding and every prayer, every contribution, every word is necessary now. We thank God for you and we thank God for everything. In case you've heard about this, the meeting goes on this evening. If we have to lift up our hands and worship outside, we will do it. We will not back out because of this. But by the grace of God, all things work together for good. God bless you. Thank you. That we've been in a new season. I've been saying it. Those are church members have heard it. I shared some things with them about two weeks ago. Things about the beginning of our ministry and all of that. And I told them it's eight years later. And this and this is happening. And this and this is happening. And I talked about that story again about the church falling and all that and i told you how those things are signs god is confirming things so you believe it so you understand that seasons are going and coming after seven years is the eight wednesday morning or it's afternoon or evening i see that seven days after i said that thing a church burned down in lagos completely from the first verse but an emphasis is on verse 11 let me read verse 11 first, then we come back to give you context. Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets practice divination for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord, saying, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster can come upon us. Pay attention. Pay attention. Because they just described your church. You will not be able to say, Lord, I, I never knew. Put this thing in the simplest translation, Bible in basic English, some, the most watered down paraphrase. 
its heads take rewards for judging, and the priests, you can say pastors, take payment for teaching. And the prophets get silver money for reading the future. But still supporting themselves on the Lord, they say, is not the Lord among us, no evil will overtake us. How many of you have the impression that the Lord will allow evil to overtake this based on his tune? That these people are not safe? Is there anyone that thinks that there's a meaning to this? That means, no, they'll be fine. It doesn't matter. The blood has done it all. Look at verse 12. Therefore, because of you, and this is where it gets very hairy. Who is you? The priests, the prophets, the heads or elders or leaders, because of them, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble and the temple mount a wooded ridge. In other words, utter and total disaster. When a city becomes like a field that was plowed, that's not a good thing. It's when a field is plowed that it should be like a field that is plowed. When, a, when Zion, the city of David, becomes a great field, when it's been leveled, who saw Syria? Who's seen pictures of Gaza? That, that's a picture of plowing. When a place has been reduced in part to rubble. Jesus came many years later. This is Micah. Oh, testament. They don't know what they are saying. The Lord, the one you call Lord, sat down and told his disciples when they asked him, How will things go? And he described the temple. I told you they happen as signs, it's called a sign. And I was wondering, praying this one, uh, yesterday I, started, I said, God, what is this? Uh, is, what is the issue? Whatever other issue God might be dealing with, amongst the things I got, I got like, what's the name of the church? The church is called the House of David. That's the name of that church group in Lagos that was set to start a series of meetings called the Resurrection, the Mercy Conference. They are here, they have it yearly. And a fire consumes everything and you might say well unfortunate very unfortunate but my mind is tuned into one thing what is the sign saying because there's nothing as terrible as someone who they are holding up a signboard very big turn here and you keep saying what and the, as a person waves the signboard you wave back <laughs> The person is doing, come back. That road has caught you crash and you're waving back. <laughs> you and all the occupants in your car are dead. You just don't know it yet. You'll know in a few seconds. As you go over the edge. Signs can be for good or for bad. Are you hearing? But when I stood here last Wednesday, not the Wednesday before the last, and said, If you were here, you heard me. I sang a song, an old song, because that's what I kept hearing in my head. Trouble and disasters, they are coming. And I stood there and I told you. And the part of that song says, we do not want to be taken by surprise. Now, I, I don't know. The audio should be somewhere online. If it isn't, put it up. Make sure it's available for others to hear it. It's one of our spontaneous songs, prophetic songs, inspired songs, things that God gave us on the spot. Trouble and disaster. It is coming. For it is written in the scriptures of God. So God allows signs. He allows signs to confirm things. To, to confirm. A sign confirms. And part of my understanding as I had mercy conference that they hold it every year. I got that. So part of God's mercy is going to be judgment. You know, with all the shakings happening in the church, it is God's mercy. 
Do you don't understand? There's a convening of God's mercy. It's going to manifest as judgment. Fires will go through the house. Seven, even eight. Yesterday, I heard one of our brothers was at school and comes back and a fire has caught on in his room and burnt wondrous something. Just burnt. I saw a short video of that. Should I tell you the brother's name? David, 2 plus 2, 19. You're not hearing. House of David, David. House of David burned down. The next day, David's room burnt. Burnt all his clothes. Burnt all his things. Is that how you develop the ability to hear the Holy Spirit? Now, again, those who don't believe in the power of God, the Holy Spirit's leading. No, 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 no. It's just coincidence. Make your own happen. Make your own coincidence happen. You can't. It's very weird. It's an old, I hear extension soccer he has had for the longest time. They can't understand it. How would he catch fire? Why should he catch fire? Born a good part of the mattress. Born his box of clothes. Born the material things. I had one of our books. Uh, 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 what? Records? What is it? Pray, uh, intercessory group book that was in his custody. He had brought it out shortly before that. Yes? And kept before he went out to school or something. The, a week before. So this is out. His Bible, his books are out. Yeah, his, his Bible is on his table. His Bible is on the table. All that, the books are not burned. No, the books his are clothes are burned. Uh, Natural paraphernalia. They burn. It's a sign. It's not just a sign to the bigger church out there. It's the house of David. It's David's room at the fire court only. God is telling the house of David, before we can rule... His enemies must be made his footstool. Are you hearing this? I know your mind will say things like, how can God use a, a whole church building? You, you know what happens before you have a big conference, you hire things? The fire burnt all. The rebuilding of the house of David will come after its purging. The spirit of burning and the spirit of judgment. Spoken on this many times. And maybe today's a good day to look at Isaiah chapter 4 again. Do we have a problem? You have Isaiah chapter 2? As for Isaiah chapter 4. In Zion and whoever is left in Jerusalem will be called holy. All in Jerusalem who are recorded among the living. Verse 4. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the blood stains from the heart of Jerusalem, read, by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. How does he clean? A spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. Who does he clean? The filth of the daughters of Zion and he cleanses the blood stains from the heart of Jerusalem. Are you hearing this? Oh, the passions, the heart, the lab of Jerusalem, the, the, the drive, the, the, the mindsets of Jerusalem is going to be purged. God will do it with fire. I believe God was giving a sign and confirming it with witnesses. Take it very seriously. Utterly seriously. Everything we said on Wednesday here about sanctification, you heard me say it. Were you here when we talked about sanctification extensively? Fear and trembling? Yes, Wednesday and Thursday. Seven to eight days after I stood here and told you disaster is coming. It is not, and I, I was telling you a story about how in 2016 I said it and six days after. How I said, I said God's going to put down church, but six days later it happened. And I just told you that story and it happens again. You'll have to be what I said you should not be, a sad you see. To say, no, no, this never means, even if God is to say it, would he say it to us? Well, maybe he won't say it to you. Who knows what you've done? But he, he, he says such things to us. He has said such things many times. And also, I think it was that Wednesday, I was telling you that those who make the mistake of looking at people and saying, if God wants to speak, he won't speak through this one. No, no, God is God. Then he has servants. And he can send any servant he likes. He can send any servant he likes. It's not, they are not your servants. They are his servants too. They are master, they stand and fall. Stand or fall. So the word I perceive the Lord is bringing 
confirmed with signs. Someday, maybe I will be serious about it and sit down and compile some of the signs and confirmations God has given over the years. If I have people help me do it. Serious messages, severe warnings, matters that when ignored, the consequences are humongous. In this instance, what does he want? He wants cleansing. Not of that particular church building. He's using them as a sign of the house of David. He's using it as the dwelling place, the room of David, the dwellings of David. David was the son, but the son of the son, the father was speaking to the Lord Jesus. I'm going to show you the house of David. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. But look at the protocol, right all the way down to verse uh, uh, verse 12, but, uh, and then um, Luke 1, verse six, uh, 69. That, that, that's just supposed to give you a little, um, oh, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 21, verse 12. Jeremiah 21, verse 12. Now, let's read it from verse 7. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first. Yes? Did you hear me say it while I was preaching earlier on today? That Judah takes the land first. Judah goes up first. Do you remember all the different times we've said it? Judah goes first. Praise goes first. In phases, they go. Those who enter first into his courts, you enter with praise, with Judah. You want to be amongst the first partakers? In everything, give thanks. Give praise. I was praying and my phone did the strangest thing. Never happened before. It just starts playing a video, YouTube, from last night. I mean, the phone is by my bed. I'm kneeling down here. This is in the morning. And it starts. I'm like, what? What sound is that? That's not a ringtone. And I flip it, and it's a video. How is this possible? And I see below, House of David, viewing now, live. And I tune in, and it's that church in Lagos. And I opened to check it last night, just in passing. But it says view, and I click it open, and, and uh, a preacher, one of the invited guests, is preaching. And he's saying that this thing is for praise, that without it, there's no resurrection. You know, Just the last five minutes or ten. Now, again, it's a wondrous thing that my phone did what it did. It has no reason on earth to have done it. It's not, it doesn't have a screen issue. It doesn't have any of those issues. Some of you say your screen touches. My screen does not touch. It's not a living thing. It just stays. Right, so. Because I kept on, I said, God, what, what are you saying? What, what's happening here? Even if he has decided to start touching itself, it's the first time. And he's talking about, and I think it's a pastor, Schumacher, it's his brother, Dele, and he's a pastor of a church in, in, in the UK. And he's preaching. And he's talking about how the man had kept saying, I don't think we will, this year's conference, I don't think, he said when he invited him last year, September, I don't think we'll be meeting here. I, just, I don't think, I don't think this, I just don't feel this year's conference will hold in our church, in our place. I think we'll be in a new place. And I'm wondering, it's when I'm done, I see a note that obviously, um, I think Sam Adeyemi lent him, he lent them his place to use for the, because the conference went on. But elsewhere, now if it's summer day, I mean, that's day star. Have you heard of the day star rising? Okay, let me stop. May we see. My greatest concern now is if we will see. Not you. Okay, you too. I'm always concerned about the bigger church. No, there was a time all my concern was about myself and God. And that's why I keep talking about the personal level of leading. But the time came... He moved almost all leadings and signs. Everything doesn't point to me. It points to the body. Now there's the local congregation like ours. And then there's the bigger body of Christ. The time comes when God takes your eyes off and all he's showing you. For the first many years of my life, it was all about me thinking, am I pleasing to God? But now that's not what burns in me as much. It's are we pleasing to God? Then as time has gone on, it's like, are we, not the 
local assembly only, but the bigger body of Christ, are they okay? Usually shows in how a preacher preaches. He talks about personal things, talks about the state of the church. And if he's talking about the wife, the Holy Spirit is turning his attention. And that's where people say, no, why don't you just leave other people alone? You don't know what you're saying. I've lived it, so I know it. I used to struggle, like... I still struggle. I still struggle to differentiate when God is speaking to me about the wider body of Christ. I'm only speaking just about us. Like these things I'm sharing now, it's for the wider body of Christ. But if I default to my nature, I don't like putting my nose in other people's business. It doesn't work. When your puzzle pieces don't fit, know you're in the wrong board when it refuses to fit. Because God is taking the scope of your thinking and thoughts beyond your local sphere. And he's saying, no, 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 no. I'm not talking to you directly. I'm talking to the bigger body. 